Hello and welcome to today's episode of The Drawing Board. My name is David Franklin. I'm your host. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we're going to go ahead and get right into one of the final installments of The Drawing Board. We're going to be talking about post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. It was once called battle fatigue syndrome once upon a time because most people who have PTSD are soldiers. That's because PTSD is a response to horrifying and scarring experiences, particularly ones where you were in some sort of physical or sexual danger. You enter this sort of, um, let, let, let's take a step back, fight or flight. Fight or flight is your response to any sort of danger. You can either attack back or run away. This is the, your body's way of keeping you alive. And it's a very effective system. So what your body does, you have the amygdala back here that's um, responding to different uh, inputs. So whenever something scary happens, you are rustling in a bush, something uh, goes up your arm like this, it might be a spider, might be a snake sort of thing. Your body responds, that's your fight or flight instinct trying to keep you alive. And the same thing happens with PTSD. But in the case of soldiers who have heard like shell bombardments and things like that, the inputs are going to be um, explosions and things like that, uh, cars backfiring, fireworks. Uh, it could be a, a number of other things, like if you were sexually assaulted, you could have been walking down a dark alleyway, which is never a good place to be, but now you have an irrational fear of, uh, of dark alleyways, and that's, a, that's a, a, an avoidance factor. So PTSD can manifest can manifest itself in different ways. For example, if you are a soldier and you're experiencing PTSD or an ex-soldier, I suppose, um, you might, when you hear fireworks going off, you might enter a flashback. You might think that things are happening. You might see family members and loved ones as potential enemies. You might try to, um, you know, get down, go for cover. You might try and fight back. You might try and get away and you might be, you know, the fight or the flight. Um, but you could also have more of an avoidance factor. We're talking about, you know, avoiding dark alleyways. Um, the avoidance factor would be something like, okay, I'm not going to go to 4th of July celebrations. I'm not going to go to the homecoming football game where there might be fireworks. I'm not going to go to the gun range. I'm not going to go to, um, to a part of town where a car might backfire. In fact, uh, talking about avoiding going to the gun range for soldiers, there is a, there's a story with that at the end of, um, it, I can't think of the name of it. It's the sniper movie, but um, he ends up going after the war. He has, you know, the most confirmed kills of all the snipers. Um, and they're at the gun range, and they're shooting, and the guy he went with randomly went into a post-traumatic stress disorder-induced flashback and ended up shooting him at the gun range. And, you know, PTSD is an extremely crippling disease, and it is it is a disease, it's something that's hard to get over, and there's a variety of different ways that people have uh, suggested getting over it. Part of it is a desensitization, desensitization, desens desensitizing, desensitization. Wow, I can't get that word right. Sorry, they try to desensitize you <laughs> to the situation. So um, in the instance of sexual assault, you might wanna you know, probably not walk down dark alleyways, but you might try and spend some time around uh, you know, a male counselor or something like that so you could learn to, to trust men. Again, um, for, for soldiers, they always have a little bit of a try and like, like a halfway house so that you can get used to civilian life. You know, you're not gonna swear as much. You're not gonna uh, respond in this way to things. Um, but uh, there, are there are different theories out there. So one of the theories uh, like with soldiers who are you know, the majority of people who have post-traumatic stress disorder uh, you could say that people, once upon a time when soldiers went to battle, they marched all the way out, fought with their spears and swords, and then marched all the way back. And during that march back, you don't have the anticipation of the fight, you only have the reliving of it, and everyone sits there and kind of talks it out with each other. So some programs include letting soldiers come back and really just just talk about it. I'm not trying to solve anything, just talk about it so they're not bottling it up. And those are some uh, experimental ways to handle post-traumatic stress disorder. So I'm on uh, WebMD right now, looking at the post-traumatic stress disorder, um, and I think I covered most of it. Uh, reliving the past, the flashbacks, the avoidance, uh, and then there are the increased arousal, it says, not sexual arousal, uh, but all of the fight or flight instincts, the I wanna fight, I wanna run, your muscles are tensing, you might be posturing, you might be getting angry facial expressions, all those things are your increased uh, arousal, you might be more jumpy, you might be uh, more irritable, all those things. Um, 
And both tra traumatic stress disorder is not in any way limited to soldiers. Just because war is such a traumatic incident, it happens to be where it is a lot, uh, a lot of sexual or physical assaults, um, war, death of a loved one, or natural disaster. All of these can be post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and then as sort of a public service announcement, I'm done with my, uh, my recapping of the facts here. As sort of a public service announcement, um, you know, I've done videos on psychopaths and sociopaths and narcissists and things like that. And yeah, there are people out there with these things. Um, but uh, ADD, OCD, all these things. Um, but just because you might fit a couple of the descriptors on a, uh, on a internet page, it, it, it can really devalue uh, the sort of support that people are getting for P so if someone actually has PTSD and like like for me um, like I would get really frustrated when I was working at Disney um, and I get on the tour guide and you get a, a big big rowdy group of guests usually Brazilian folks because in that culture they like to clap they like to clap they like to clap and they say elephant elephant hey elephant and they just keep clapping and you get a whole a uh, group of people like this and they they don't follow rules they're standing up all the time leaning over the sides holding their kids out over the sides all these sorts of things that really make you nervous and in no like yeah I might see a group of uh, people in Brazilian shirts getting on and might be a little rowdy might clap a couple of times you think oh no here it goes in no way is that PTSD in no way in me being worried about something happening there in no way is that PTSD um, if you got a bad grade on a test, uh, you almost certainly don't have PTSD from that. Um, so all these little things that you think you might have PTSD from, you're really, honestly, uh, just a PSA here, you're devaluing the people who actually have been sexually, physically assaulted, people who have actually been in war zones, people who have actually like survived Hurricane Katrina, those sorts of things. Um, you are, by thinking you have PTSD, now you might have a very small form of anxiety, but no way do you have PTSD. And it's, it's you know, in my opinion, I have, I have family members who are in the military and it's, it's not a joking matter to me to talk about uh, PTSD in such a lighthearted manner. So, um, anyways, that's the end of my PTSD episode. A um, little bit of a recap here. I'm going to be finishing off, I have my, my list of the things I'm gonna do here. Um, these are all the remaining mental illness and Meyer Briggs uh, videos that I promised on doing before I officially switch this over to the vlog channel. Um, I'm 95% sure that I'm ending uh, the drawing board and uh, making this sort of a personal vlog video, which the science will shine through because that's really a part of my personality, but I'm going to make a, another channel, uh, which I already have the channel, but no videos are posted on it called um, The Scholastic Gentleman. and. Um, uh, that's going to be my main science channel. It's going to be a little bit more breadth there. I might get into history, literature, you know, physics, chemistry, biology, uh, philosophy, all those sorts of things. So it's going to be scholastic, not just science. But of course, that that's as an engineer, that's more my field of expertise. So I'll probably focus a little bit more on that. But I'll, I'll branch out every once in a while. The point being there. Um, I only have maybe a dozen more videos I'm going to do here um, on mental illnesses and the Myers-Briggs test before I officially switch it over. So um, I'm going to, once I start posting those videos, I'll definitely give you a link so that you can uh, head on over if you want to see the science stuff. Uh, but until then, I uh, look forward to a couple more videos. I'm going to do one on anxiety, on some more Myers-Briggs stuff, and then, uh, and then we'll be good. So thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.